Wow. That is the fish of a lifetime. Here we go, boy. Wow, we. That thing is a monster. They fight hard, don't they? Look at that magnificent fish. <laughs> the size of that fish. There he oh, is again. The color is incredible. Oh, there we go. The Real Fishing Show with Baba Zumi. Big old. Great Lakes small boat. That is a big rainbow trout, Chris. Nice double header. Whoa! <laughs> nice jump. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That is a monster small boat. Man, that is so cool. Another one. There we go. The biggest pike I've ever caught in my life. Look at that chunk. Well, that's what we're talking about. Real fishing is sponsored by. Mercury, number one on the water, and Mystic Lubricants. On The Real Fishing Show, we make catching fish like this a possibility. Cool thing is, Wayne, this bait, they do eat it. So you can let them load up and then just set on them. <laughs> I don't know. How big? I don't know. Oh! Nice one. Pretty good size. Just pretty enough good. that I can get cast right behind it, just in case there's a follower. Pretty good size. I'm just going to waypoint this. Oh, that's a nice bass. Yeah. That's a big smallmouth. Big old Georgian Bay smallmouth. <laughs> you know, it's funny when it gets hot and flat like this and calm on a summer day, nothing beats a soft plastic stick bait. And of course, when you got them full of Sand. Yeah. Like these ones, you know, it just, it's nice. That's, whoa. Oh, that's a four pounder. Yeah, that's a nice small one. Yeah. Come on in here, baby. That's a biggie. Whoa. That's a big one. No net in the boat, I know. I do have one. I should get it out. In fact, Newton. In fact, after this after fish, we break, will. After you break that one off, you might get it out, yeah. <laughs> I'm using eight pound cast uh, on here. A uh, liter or? Well, eight pound floral liter and then the eight pound main line for a fire line. Okay. Oh! You got one too? Double header. Double header, whoa. <laughs> nice jump. <laughs> All right. Another good one? Yeah. Wow, this thing swallowed it, look at that. Well, I didn't let mine run around like yours. Oh, is that right? So you, uh, get yours. here, I'll get the net. I'm just gonna live well this for a second. Summer smallmouth, middle of summer. A little bit of an algae bloom. It's almost worth putting the power poles down, Bob. I think I think it will. Well, you know what? I, uh, I could do something else too. Uh, if they'll hold, I don't know how deep we are here. Look at that. Seven and a half, they're holding. All right. Put them alive. Well, we'll release them in a little bit. Come on, baby. This is a bulldog. <laughs> Look at this. Is it a good one? It's not a monster. I think it's a twin sister to yours. You know what? You know, with GPSs nowadays, a lot of people don't use the buoy markers as much. But you know, a buoy marker is nice just because you can mark an exact spot and keep going around. You want to grab the net, Wayne? Sure. Uh, yeah, handy. Hey, it's like the same year class of one I got. That's what I said, yeah. They're in the same school, same grade. There we go. Nice. Oh, that's a heavy one. Look at that. Nice fish. Hey? Small head. A little tiny hook just right there. Any pliers? Nope. Oh, you didn't even have them hooked that well. Oh, no, of course Barely. Not. All right. Nice well, fishing. you know what? They're they're fat fish yeah. for uh, for midsummer. Yeah, let's beautiful. put them back right here, right? Beautiful. Fish. Where are you going? Right in here. Beautiful. Okay. All righty. Let's see if we can't catch another one of them guys. They're pretty hard fighting in this hot water, aren't they? Yeah, it's amazing. Wayne's got. Got him. Yep. Yeah, it's got a little tiny bump and something. And another small mouth. Oh, he's hold off. On. Hold on. Ooh, I thought you had a good set on him. Yeah. We are on the juice. Funny, you know, you mark when you're in open water like this and you get a bite, you know, just hit that waypoint just to mark it as a reference point. And I marked it 
here just as a, as a waypoint. So I'm gonna sit the boat right here and then cast in the direction that we had those fish. <laughs> I was just thinking, oh. just thinking, Bob, I changed up to a What'd you do? A, a swim bait. What, like a rib shot rib type? Shot, a bigger swim little, bait. Lately, I've been putting a little bit of spinner on the end of it. Oh, yeah? Here, hold on. Let me grab the net. Oh, he's off. He's oh, off. No. He's a good one, too. That was bigger. That was bigger. Look at that. That's what they do. They twist it up. That was a bigger fish. I thought you got a good hook set, but I don't know. Maybe not. So, weighted. Tungsten weight on the top. This thing is going quick. Weight on the hook. And a little spinner at the back. A little willy. Yeah. Uh, you rattle it near the surface too. That's kind of the best of both worlds, the spinner bait and the swim bait. Yeah. Coming up. Yes, oh, there, there is. There, there, yeah. There. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. Large mouth, is it or small mouth? It's fighting like a large mouth, but I think it's a small mouth. In the weeds. In the weeds. I don't know, it came up. <laughs> In the weeds. Right on top of the rocks there. Let's see what we got. Looks small mouth ish. It's a small mouth. Let me just dip them for you. You know, <laughs> with our track record, you know, that big one getting off. Let me just let me just dip this baby. Okay, cut. Just one arm. What? Oh, nice. That's a nice bass. Not bad. I thought it was a little guy. He was ticking. Ticking like a perch. So what's with the gloves oh, anyway? With the um, gloves? Yeah, for the sun protection or protect Yeah, I don't want to have cancer. Hand. As I'm getting old, you see all these people with the spots on their hands, and I don't want those spots. So. You're protecting yourself. UPF? Right. Yes, sir. They're special fishing gloves. So you threw a swim bait right up shallow, huh? A little, little grass, grass pig. Grass yeah. pig, there we go. <laughs> Way up shallow. Way up shallow. Right on the rocks. That's what I thought it was sticking rocks. Tick, tick, tick. So you're just doing slow, steady retrieve? No, I can't. Because I got about a fairly heavy jig on there. Oh, I had to so keep you're... it going quick. So that was a reaction bait. That was a reaction bait, and it was on shore. Well, I'm still throwing the old stick bait here. I'm trying for the non-aggressive big fat fish. That's so funny. I cast out and I'm looking at the depth finder and I'm going, oh man, I'm hung up. <laughs> and so I'm pulling back, pulling back and all of a sudden <laughs> fish jumps. I don't even get a hook set on it. It's a big fish, Wayne. <laughs> Pretty exacting technique there. <laughs> well, that's the cool thing about a stick bait, like this this uh, general that I'm using. Is it's got all this scent baked into it, and <laughs> when they grab it, they eat it. They just hold on forever oh. while you pull hard, and they jump around. <laughs> that's a big fish. That's so funny. Let's see if there's any followers, Wayne. Look at the size of that fish. Yeah, let's see that. Yes, oh, there is. There is. There is. Yes. There is. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. That is a huge fish. Oh yeah, I saw the one behind just it. Just flashed on my bait there. This is a big one here. Get ready. Oh! You oh. <laughs> get nervous, folks. Oops, oops. One-handed. What happened to the old strength? There nice. Go. That's nice a there. big boy. There we go. That's a Georgian Bay smallmouth right there. Ooh, it's heavy on this net. Man, look at the size of that. Whoa, <laughs> look at the size of that brute. Wow. <laughs> well over five pounds. <laughs> All right, folks. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. I'll tell you what, man, these stick baits do nothing. Just throwing them out, let them quiver down, sit on the bottom, lift them up, lift and let them fall down. Sure catch a lot of fish and that is a good smallmouth. Wait, I'm gonna get this baby back in the water. Time to let her go. You know what we should do is get maybe a tube as a follow-up bait out. Want me to grab a tube? Good idea. You got one handy? I've got about 20 rods handy. Or a drop shot. That's always a good deal. 
drop shot. Can't go wrong with drop shot as a follow-up bait. Whoops, oops, 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 oops. <laughs> Was they're, he hide, they're hiding under the shade of the boat here. Oh, that's funny. I didn't. I wasn't even ready. Okay. Oh, here he's on it. There we go. <laughs> they like the boat. That's our shade fish. Yeah. They like the shade of the boat. Is that an expensive rod you're going to break there by yeah. boat lifting that baby in? As long as you don't get it too much past 11, you're good. I was a little high there though. Yeah. What's that high sticking? No, it's gonna, yeah, yeah I just did a yeah. tip uh, on high sticking actually uh, the other day. You know, it's funny, sometimes these bass can be pretty easy to catch, can't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, for the last two you've got it, you did a pretty good job on it, sort of nonchalantly. <laughs> It doesn't matter what species of fish you fish for or what rod and reel you use, it's important to match your line to the outfit and to the species and technique that you're using. And uh, I've just got a couple of examples here. The spinning rod here is spooled up with gel spun line and uh, it's got eight pound test line, which is gel spun, which is very thin diameter, but no stretch. Now this one here, this bait casting outfit has got 20 pound test fluorocarbon line. Recently, I was doing some flipping and pitching and I was using a similar outfit to this with 65 pound braid in the weed mats. Now there's no question that when you've got a tungsten weight and say a lure like this soft plastic trigger quad is that you want heavy line going into weed mats to pull those big fish out. Thus, the heavier action rod, the bait casting outfit which handles heavier line works better. Now, yesterday we caught a bunch of big smallmouth bass. My brother Wayne and I were using spinning outfits and we were using thin diameter, low pound test line, eight pound test line with fluorocarbon leaders. And we were using this wacky stick bait here just with a thin wire hook. Now, in the case of this, you would never be able to throw this with a heavier line outfit like this particular uh, bait caster. You need the fixed spool spinning reel and the lighter pound test so it feeds off of there for long casts in the clear water. So next time you go fishing, remember, the line that you use is so important for the technique and rod and reel that you've got. Another thing to keep in mind too is when you're out there fishing is fill your reels accordingly. A lot of folks don't fill their reels up and they don't get the maximum amount of casting distance. Coming up. The water is so warm. We're staying up here at Delawana Resort, which is in Honey Harbor, Ontario, on Georgian Bay. And this place has got a lot of character. It dates back to 1897. I can't imagine there being resorts back then. And so there's all kinds of different styles of buildings here that were put on the property over the years. And one of the things about this self-catered resort is it's great for the family. They've got beaches and tennis courts and swimming. There's a restaurant on site. If you want, you can bring your own boat like we did, or you can rent one of their boats here. And uh, there's lots to do for you and the family. And it's a wonderful place. It's close to Toronto, easy to get to, and especially the fishing is amazing. I'm gonna throw behind that and just see if there is a follower. I'll throw the drop shot rig. Okay. Okay, just to see. And that's, you know, this midsummer fishing, you start getting them where they get bunched up in little wolf packs, right? Yeah. So where's your line? At? I'll do TV fishing. Here he comes for a jump. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Versus tournament fishing. Yeah, tournament <laughs> fishing, everybody keeps the rod down. You don't want them to jump when it's tournament fishing, but uh <laughs> Oh, that's actually a nicer fish than I thought. I thought it was like a, a two pounder, but it's, it is bigger. Oh, it's a chunky one. Oh, that's a nice one. Let me get the net. I don't see any followers, do you? 
I do not see any fallers. Well, unless they're aerial fallers, he's jumped so much. Ew. Come on. They fight so hard. The water is so warm and that's a heavy little fish. Water is so warm that uh, they got a lot of a lot of power. And you know, one thing what we're doing today is is we're we're covering these shallow flats out here in Georgian Bay and and uh, I actually see a great big carp going by right there. It's oh, gonna yeah. be about a 25 pounder swimming by. But we're covering these giant flats, but especially the ones that have boulders, sand, and a little bit of scattered weed and even some rubble on them, anyway. Yeah, this is just perfect when I'm looking down here. You see just the odd weed. The odd big the rock, boulder. The odd big boulder, a lot of gravel too. And the key with shallow smallmouth on the Great Lakes, and I don't care if you're talking Lake Simcoe, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, up here in G Bay or Georgian Bay is this. When it's flat and sunny and you got mile high blue skies, those fish come up shallow, a certain population of them. There's still some that stay deep on the humps and, and breaks and ridges, but they do come up shallow. And uh, we have a lot of clouds in the background, as you can see. South of here, they're talking uh, down in the city, they're talking rain, aren't they, Wayne? Major thunderstorms, so right before the front, this is just perfect. But it always takes a while for them to come up uh, with the sun. They don't immediately, and when the sun hits, they don't immediately come up. Just a gradual thing. It's almost like someone turns a switch. Yeah, like bang, usually midday to late afternoon. Yeah, usually, the best I don't time. know, what is it? You know, two, three, four hours it takes the sun to get them up. Well, I'm going to circle around there and take another pass. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Coming up. That is a big fish. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. You may have noticed how concepts in fishing suddenly grow in popularity to emerge as the hottest invention since sliced bread. Eventually, however, all these great ideas become unfashionable, though still continuing to catch fish. Strange as it may seem, many of these so-called innovations have made the rounds long before. Marabou is the very best example of this phenomenon. Indeed, the downy feathers of turkeys have been putting fish on the bank for over 200 years. Originally a fly tying material, it's been dyed to every color known to mankind. Stemming from this was the invention of marabou jigs. In our opinion, these old baits still remain one of the most effective tools for catching fish. It's all thanks to the amazing action of this incredible material. In the water, marabou literally springs to life. It moves, swims, and breathes with the slightest twitch of a rod. Unlike synthetic materials, it holds added scent forever. In the mouth, it's soft, organic, and gets hopelessly tangled in teeth. Sadly, there are precious few lures on the market that incorporate this fantastic material. No problem, you can easily make your own. Simply visit the fly tying section of any tackle shop. You can bet we'll be replacing all the rubber skirts on our baits. This little plastic tool here has got a bunch of O-rings on it. And you just reload by sliding them over this little knurled end here. And then what you do is you put your, your stick bait in. So I've got the general in there halfway. And I'll just take this O-ring and I'll slide it right along there. And now I've got an O-ring on there and you get a lot more bang for your buck. This bait here will last a lot longer with that O-ring on. And then you just hook your hook right on the O-ring and now you're off to the races. Isn't that funny? It's swimming towards me. <laughs> All of a sudden I could, oh, we come off. I could not feel my lure. And I'm going, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And the fish grabbed this bait and it's not letting go and it's swimming right towards me. Sometimes and they'll do that, Bob, if you just give them very light pressure, you know? But the key is to try to give them light pressure to get them to swim sideways and get much better hooks at. If they're swimming right towards you, that's when you lose them. Just like that one. Yeah, because I guess they just open their mouth that's up. That's right. And if you're, you're not getting sideways, it. you get the hook. Got him. I uh, don't like losing them like that. That was a nice three pound smallmouth. One thing is 
load your reel properly too, and I can't stress this enough. This spinning reel here has got a lot of line on it. Now I've got backing on because this this gel spun line here, or um, I should say this, this you know fire line that's on here, very thin diameter, this eight pound test. So I put on about a hundred yards of it. I put backing on it though, but I make sure that it's filled about an eighth of an inch from the spool and you get a much longer cast and your reel is filled like this. Just letting it sink. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> come on, maybe he'll come back. Oh, he came back. Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look Whoa. at the size of that thing. That's bigger than the other one. <laughs> Let's put the power poles down. Whoa, Wayne, get the net. That is a giant. You get nervous, folks. That you get is nervous. a giant fish. I think that's over six pounds, Wayne. That is a big fish. That thing is huge. Look at the size of it. Definitely well over five pounds. He's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Oh, that's a big one. That is a big, big fish. Wow. Look at that. Look at that general bait. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little pressure on it. I know I shouldn't, but oh, he's off! Oh, he's off! That no. thing was <laughs> that thing was about 24 inches long. That was humongous. I thought I had him in the net. Okay. That was close. Look at that. You said you put the pressure on him. Yeah, I know. I just thought I'd force him <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> That's definitely the biggest smallmouth I've had on this year. I can't believe I lost it. Wow. That thing was, you know, it was so long. You saw it. Oh, yeah, it what right. do you think it was? Over no, six? It's over six. Easy. Easy. It was like 24 inches long. You really yeah. cranked it, eh? You oh, <laughs> I, I just thought I had it hooked good and I just wanted to get it. You know, and they, there's a lesson to be learned. When you're using a thin wire hook like this, obviously a soft action rod, this is a medium action rod. And, uh, you know, because you got the low, or no stretch line, you don't want to horse them, right? No, you got And I, I did an right. amateur mistake there. I put a lot of pressure on it right at right. the end. You said you were going to do it too. And you yeah. know, when I didn't have a lot of line outs, you don't have a lot of stretch, pulled the hook, thin wire hooks, just play them out. And yeah. the other thing, remember he hit the second time. So he probably didn't have it as good as the first time. Oh. You know what? I think it's time to go, folks. I've got a towel in the console there. It's uh, for, for big tears and I'm just gonna wipe those tears off. We'll see you next week right here for some more real fishing. Wah, 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 wah. I'll just catch another bigger one. <laughs> real fishing was sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water, and Mystic Lubricants. Let's size that baby. That thing's got some weight to it. <laughs> size that puppy right there. That is that is just wild. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. <laughs>